The name Citroen is synonymous with innovative design and world-class expertise. And in today's highly competitive market, Citroen engineers continue to be leaders in the application of state-of-the-art motor vehicle technology. One such development is the Hydractive 3 suspension system. And this program, intended mainly for technicians, introduces the new system. To aid explanation, the program is divided into sections. Section 1 provides an overview of the system. Section 2 looks in more detail at the operating principles and the construction and location of the components. And finally, Section 3 outlines some of the practicalities of working upon the system. Combining the latest developments in electronics with a simplified hydraulic circuit, the Hydractive 3 suspension sets new standards in active safety, comfort and reliability. The new suspension system automatically adapts to the road conditions, the driving style and it even varies the ride height according to the vehicle's speed. Furthermore, the vehicle can be raised or lowered on demand by simply pressing the appropriate button. The selected ride height is then displayed on a screen. Additionally, on some models, by using the Sport button, there's a choice between two suspension settings, Comfort or Sport. Each setting selects different spring and damping rates. And by the way, the system uses a new fluid, which is 100% synthetic. Furthermore, for reliability and simplicity, the number of high-pressure connectors has been reduced. And unlike previous versions, the new suspension system uses an electric pump to generate hydraulic pressure. Moreover, the brakes and power steering are conventional, standalone systems, although the power steering uses fluid from the suspension system's reservoir. Two versions of the system will be available. Hydractive 3 and Hydractive 3 Plus. We'll explain the Hydractive 3 system later, but first, let's consider the Hydractive 3 Plus system. At the heart of the system is the built-in hydroelectronic interface, or BHI. It's located in the engine bay and comprises an electronic control unit, an electric motor, and a hydraulic pump together with an accumulator and four electrovalves. The BHI receives information from two electronic height sensors, a steering wheel sensor on the steering column, and from various other sensors via the multiplex network which inform on vehicle speed and acceleration, for example. The front height sensor is connected to the front anti-roll bar and the rear sensor is attached to the rear anti-roll bar. This is how the system operates. Hydraulic fluid from a reservoir enters the BHI where it is first pressurised and then distributed via the front and rear stiffness regulators to the four suspension cylinders. Incidentally, all the suspension spheres are new and are known as slimline spheres. We'll look at them in a little more detail later. Similar to earlier systems, leak-off pipes return fluid from the suspension cylinders to the reservoir. As you may expect, the reservoir also receives fluid via an operational return line from the BHI. In contrast to the earlier systems, the Hydractive 3 system does not use mechanical height correctors or a safety valve. These functions are now achieved within the BHI. The multiplexed BHI receives information every hundredth of a second from the numerous sensors. 
Using the information collected over the last 60 seconds, the BHI automatically and continuously adapts the settings to suit the current driving style. This is achieved by incorporating or isolating the third sphere on each axle from the hydraulic circuit. Hence, both the spring rate and the damping are instantaneously altered to achieve either a soft or a firm suspension. A soft suspension ensures a comfortable ride when driving on straight roads. Conversely, a firm suspension helps to improve handling and stability when cornering. The switching threshold, that's the point at which the suspension changes from soft to firm, can be lowered by simply pressing the sport button. In addition, by using wheel speed information and the signals from the two height sensors, the vehicle's ride height is automatically controlled by the BHI to suit the prevailing conditions. On a good road surface at speeds above 110 km per hour, the vehicle is lowered by 15 mm. This improves the aerodynamics, the road holding and helps to reduce fuel consumption. At speeds below 90 km per hour, the vehicle returns to its normal running position. However, if travelling over a poor road surface at speeds less than 70 km per hour, the vehicle's ride height is increased by 13 mm to ensure safety whilst maintaining comfort. When required, one of four heights can be set from inside the vehicle by pressing the one-touch height control. The four positions are H to change a wheel, I to clear obstacles at low speed, N the normal ride height, and L the lowest position for loading or hitching up a trailer. For example, to clear an obstacle, the driver can select the intermediate position, position I, which will increase the ride height by 40 mm. Once the road speed exceeds 40 km per hour, the vehicle returns to the normal ride height and automatic height control is resumed. If, when stationary, the driver selects the highest setting, the ground clearance is increased by 75 mm. However, when the vehicle reaches a speed of 10 km per hour, it automatically lowers to position I. It then automatically returns to the normal ride height when a speed of 40 km per hour is reached. In a similar way, had the driver selected the lowest position, then as soon as the vehicle reaches 10 km per hour, the normal ride height is automatically resumed. Now let's consider the BHI. Within the hydraulic section of the BHI, an electric motor drives a five-piston pump to pressurise the fluid. The system is position-dependent, meaning that the BHI switches off the electric motor when the height sensors report that the vehicle is at the required height. It's important to understand that the pump will continue to operate until the desired height is achieved. And because the system is position-dependent, there's no pressure regulator. However, for safety, a valve within the pump limits the maximum pressure to between 160 and 180 bars. To minimise pump noise and reduce any pressure fluctuations, the BHI incorporates an accumulator which acts as a damper. Finally, within the BHI are four electro valves. There's one pair for the front suspension and another pair for the rear. Each pair comprises one inlet and one exhaust electro valve, and together they control the flow of fluid to and from the suspension cylinders. Opening the inlet electro valve allows fluid to flow into the cylinders to raise the ride height. 
Conversely, when the inlet electrovalve is shut, opening the exhaust electrovalve lets fluid return and the ride height decreases. And if both electrovalves are closed, the ride height remains constant. Furthermore, each exhaust electrovalve is equipped with a non-return valve that prevents the vehicle from sinking overnight. The entry-level Hydractive 3 system is only slightly different to the Hydractive 3 Plus system just described. With Hydractive 3, the two stiffness regulators and their accompanying spheres are omitted, leaving just the four spheres, one fitted to each suspension cylinder. Hence, the system cannot switch between soft and firm and therefore a blanking plate has replaced the sport switch on the centre console. The ability to select the four preset heights remains the same as for the Hydractive 3 Plus system. Likewise, the Hydractive system retains the automatic control of the ride height. And the speed-related switching thresholds with their associated height parameters also remain the same as for the Hydractive 3 Plus system. Both systems are fitted with spheres of a new design, known as the slimline sphere. The first thing you'll notice is that they are now grey in colour and are flatter than the previous green spheres fitted to earlier vehicles. By the way, to ensure the suspension performs to its designed specification, never fit these new spheres to the earlier systems. During manufacture, the spheres are pressurised using nitrogen gas, similar to their predecessors, but they are then sealed for life and cannot be regassed. Gas pressure is maintained due to the revised construction of the membrane, which is now multi-layered and impermeable to nitrogen. Furthermore, the new shape ensures optimum operation of the membrane as it flexes, and so keeps fatigue to a minimum. Although the volume of the slimline sphere is only 385 cubic centimetres, its performance has been improved by 30% compared to the old design. Finally, for safety reasons, a sphere must be safely depressurized before it's scrapped. A special procedure, outlined in the workshop manual, explains how to dispose of used spheres. In this final section, you'll see how to depressurize the system, replace the BHI, top up the reservoir, and adjust the ride height. But first, we need to mention that whenever you're working on the system, cleanliness is of the utmost importance. Dirt or contamination of the fluid will cause severe damage and consequently be expensive to repair. Always refer to the repair manual when working on the vehicle and pay particular regard to the safety precautions. Before being able to safely disconnect any of the high-pressure pipes, the system must be depressurized. This can be performed electronically using Lexia or Proxia, or alternatively the system can be depressurized mechanically. Whichever method you use, always remember to follow carefully the procedure in the repair manual and use the vehicle's weight to assist the process. Do not attempt to depressurize the system with the car suspended on a two-post ramp. Note also that both the front and rear hydraulic circuits are individually depressurized. We'll begin by demonstrating how to electronically depressurize the system. Start the engine and select the low position. 
The BHI's pump will run until most of the fluid has returned to the reservoir. Then, with the vehicle at its lowest position, switch the ignition off. Note that for the system to breathe adequately, the reservoir's cap must be removed before continuing. Failure to do so may cause the return pipes to become disconnected when any remaining fluid flows back to the reservoir. Connect Lexia or Proxia and then switch the ignition back on. From the suspension menu, select Actuators Test. Next, select and confirm the function to lower the front of the vehicle by purging the front hydraulic circuit and wait for the vehicle to lower further. Repeat the operation for the rear hydraulic circuit by selecting the appropriate function from the menu. The system should now be safe to work upon. If you're manually depressurizing both hydraulic circuits, the procedure is as follows. With the engine running, place the vehicle into low and wait for the car to settle. Then switch off the ignition. With a bleed bottle attached, slacken the front and rear bleed screws and wait until no more fluid flows out of the system. Safely dispose of any recovered hydraulic fluid and remember it must not be returned to the reservoir under any circumstances. By the way, the position of the bleed screws varies between Hydractive 3 and Hydractive 3 Plus vehicles. Their exact location is shown in the repair manual. Finally, don't forget to re-tighten the bleed screws after completing your work. With the system depressurized, the reservoir can be removed. Having disconnected the negative terminal of the battery, raise the car and attach the right-hand wheel arch lining. Undo the mounting nuts and clamp the power steering return hose. Then carefully disconnect the hose and allow the fluid to drain out of the reservoir. Next, undo the reservoir mounting nuts and tilt the reservoir to gain access to the remaining pipework which must also be disconnected. The reservoir can now be carefully lifted away and stored in a clean area. In order to remove the BHI, disconnect the wiring harness, and the two high-pressure pipes. Note that the pipes and their seals are of a new design. Once disturbed, a seal must always be replaced with a new one. Additionally, inside the BHI, there are two green O-rings, one for the front circuit and another for the rear. It's important that both green seals are present before reconnecting the high-pressure pipes. Ease the BHI towards the engine to make it easier to disconnect the last two electrical connectors before lifting it out of the engine bay. Note, the BHI is a sealed unit and no attempt must be made to separate any of its component parts or to repair it.
Installing the replacement unit is simply the reverse procedure, although you must remember to tighten the high-pressure pipes to the figure quoted in the repair manual. Only ever fill the reservoir with new fluid from a sealed container. The new orange fluid for the third generation hydroactive system is produced by Total and is known as LDS. The label explains the required cleanliness standards when using the fluid. For example, it's 100% synthetic and must not, under any circumstances, be mixed with green LHM. Fill the reservoir. And reconnect the battery. To ensure the BHI is primed with fluid, use the special tool to pressurise the reservoir to 0.5 of a bar. And switch on the ignition. The BHI's pump will run and the fluid level and the pressure within the reservoir will drop. Wait for the pump to stop and recheck the fluid level. For Hydroactive 3 Plus vehicles, the level must be topped up to this mark. However, for Hydroactive 3 vehicles, set the level to the base mark. With the mechanical work completed, the new BHI requires programming, which is carried out using either Lexia or Proxia. Programming configures the system, allowing the steering wheel sensor and height sensors to communicate with the BHI and also to permit communication via the multiplexed network. Incidentally, programming is also required after the replacement of any of the system sensors. To assist you with the procedure, make sure you follow the information outlined in the repair manual. To check and adjust the vehicle's height, the car must be on a four-post lift. Check that the tyre pressures are correct, the suspension is set to the normal position, the handbrake is off, the special tools 8006T are available, and then switch on the ignition. The following measurements must be taken at the front and the rear of the vehicle. We'll begin with the front measurement. From underneath the car, raise the vehicle, but let go when the system is felt to react. Allow the car to lower, then rise and settle. Using the special tool, measure the height and make a note of it. Note the special area marked on the subframe where the measurement must be taken. Next, pull the vehicle down until the system is felt to respond and then let go. The vehicle should rise, then lower, and then stabilise. Measure the height again, and using your previous measurement, take the average of the two readings. The height measurement for the front end is known as H1. Carefully fit the special tool 8006T and measure the front wheel's radius, R1. And using the formula shown in the manual, subtract the appropriate figure from the radius to calculate the theoretical front height, H1. 
Compare the measured and theoretical values of H1. Adjustment of the front height is necessary if a difference of more than plus or minus 2 mm exists between the theoretical and measured values. Checking the rear height, H2, is a similar process. The measurement between the body and ground is taken here. The same tool, 8006T, is used to measure the radius of the rear wheel, R2. However, the formula for calculating the rear height is different, so take care to look in the repair information. Similar to the front, compare the measured and calculated values for the rear height. If there's a difference of more than plus or minus 2 mm between the theoretical and measured values, adjustment is required. Two types of height adjustment exist. If the difference between the measured and theoretical height is 10 mm or less, the heights can be reset using Lexia or Proxia. Conversely, if the difference between the measured and theoretical height is greater than 10 mm, the heights must be pre-adjusted manually. Pre-adjustment of the front height is achieved by rotating the height sensor's collar. Carefully slacken the collar's bolt sufficiently to allow the collar to turn. To reduce the height, rotate the collar towards the front of the vehicle. To increase the height, rotate the collar in the opposite direction. The system is extremely sensitive, so to begin with, only move the collar by the smallest amount possible. And then wait for approximately 10 seconds for the height to alter. Turn the collar until the calculated dimension for H1 is obtained. And tighten the bolt to the correct torque. If obtaining the exact height proves difficult, then providing the height is within 10 mm of the calculated dimension, the bolt can be tightened. The adjustment must then be set precisely using Proxia or Lexia. The method for pre-adjusting the rear height is identical, except rotating the collar towards the rear of the vehicle reduces the height and vice versa. Generally, whenever the measured height is within 10 mm of the theoretical height, then it can be adjusted by using Lexia or Proxia. Select the Adjust Reference Heights menu, and when prompted, enter the difference between the radius and the measured height for each axle. After the process is complete, remeasure both heights and ensure they are within 2 mm of the theoretical height. If not, then double-check your measurements and readjust the heights as required. So we've come to the end of this programme and we hope that you've found the information both interesting and informative. The Hydractive 3 system not only provides our customers with a superb ride, a safe ride, and the reliability they associate with Citroen. It also combines a simplified hydraulic circuit with the latest developments in electronics. For customers and technicians alike, it's true to say that nothing moves you like a Citroen.